Hello everybody, I'm Michael Richter from Double E Properties and in this video I want to talk to everybody about debt and the different utilizations of debt. So typically when we're looking at debt, there's two different types of debt. There's good debt and then there's bad debt, okay? If you look at bad debt, this is the typical debt that, that most consumers carry and not so many investors carry, okay? Bad debt, I would classify, this is just me personally, is typically items that go down in value, that cost you a lot of money, and just don't really have any intrinsic value. TVs, cars, clothes, uh, stuff around the house. I mean, you know, just basic home improvements that you can't really get a return on. That's what I consider a bad debt. Things that charge you a ton of interest that you're paying for months or if not years that can multiply the item you bought by, you know, tenfold if you, if you just make minimum payments. That's what I'd consider a bad debt. A good debt, on the other hand, is something that typically, I think, has a lot of security in it, raises in value, maybe has some sort of cash flow attached to it, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be real estate, but something that gives you like somewhat of a fighting chance to give you a return on the money that you're spending on it minus the interest rate. So that's, that's sort of how, like roughly, briefly, how I'd, I'd classify debt. And I just, I mean, okay, so I'm gonna tell you what I do and what my story was and how I did this. But I also want to, you know, disclose, this is the disclaimer, go and talk to your mortgage broker before you start doing this, what I did. And, you know, sit down, talk to a mortgage broker, talk to somebody at the bank before you start opening up lines of credit, just because I did that, okay? This is just my experience and this, I'm not really telling you guys to do this, I'm just saying this is just what I've done, okay? So saying that, there's three different types of debt also, okay, that I look at. There's, there's my home equity line of credit, okay, which is called the HELOC, okay? That's the cheapest debt that you can borrow. That's usually prime minus, you know, one or 2%, depending on what you can negotiate. I've been borrowing money when I started, it was in the low 2%. Now, uh, the mortgage we're closing on very shortly, it's gonna be just in the low fours, just over 4%. Uh, and that's for an investor. You can typically borrow money if it's a primary residence for, for just under 4%. So that's the cheapest way. Then there's a personal line of credit, which is, is it, it's, it's, it's usually prime plus a couple of percent. Uh, that's going to cost you more money. And then there's lastly, I mean, if you're just looking at credit, we're looking at uh, credit cards that I've also used to close in a property. But I mean, when I use credit cards to close in a property or pay down my HST, it's going to be, it's a very, very short period of time. And I do everything I can to pay that out because the interest rates are usually close to 20%. So I don't want to be in debt for very long on that. But I have used, I mean, credit cards. I've done whatever I can. And I did uh, an article in Real Estate Wealth Magazine. I've done a couple of articles for them and I explained that strategy, how I use credit cards. I did whatever I could. The reason why I use credit cards is because I didn't use a joint venture for these products. I mean, it was just my wife and I doing it and we we're doing it mainly on one income. So I didn't have enough money when I bought these properties to afford the properties. So I used, uh, what did I use? I used HELOCs typically, or you know whatever lines I could to pay the builder to deposit, but I paid it off quickly to close in the property. We use credit cards just to get that bridge until we're closed and then we could utilize maybe other lines of credit that you know, we weren't necessarily allowed to utilize because, you know, the credits, ha the, the banks have certain stipulations on how much credit you can utilize when they're running your credit. So you got to be really careful about what you're using and you got to be strategic about how you use that. But you know what, we've done it. And yes, we've accumulated interest. But I like I can tell you personally, even at 18% interest, it wasn't for very long. It was a matter of weeks, if not maybe a month, one to two months. That's as long as we really used it for. But if you look at what I've paid in interest on this hand and you look at what I've made in returns on this hand, it's like it's literally fractions of a penny on the dollar, right? So it's like, okay, I spend a penny in debt, but then I make a dollar in return. Am I still ahead? <laughs> Absolutely, right? So I think how debt is defined, whether it's good or bad, is really a matter of what your intentions are. So you, depending on what you intend to do with it, if you're opening up lines of credit and you're personal name against properties, it really comes down to what your intentions are to do with that. 
you know, if you open up a HELOC against your house and you pull money out and you go and buy a, a Mercedes Benz or a Tesla or <laughs> you do an addition in your own house, you use it to go on vacations and you spend it all, you're really not going to get ahead. And especially if you do that and you're only making minimum payments, you're just, I mean, you're just, it's, it's basically consumer debt. So it takes a certain amount of disciplines. When you have all that money in front of you, and I can go to the bank and take out a lot of money right now, it takes a lot of disciplines to have it. But I can tell you, it's really, really, really gotten me ahead. And it's also there as a security blanket. If something happens, if I need the money and something happens in one of the properties, I don't maximize myself and leverage myself to the ninth degree where, you know, if something happens, I can't afford to close on it or I can't afford to fix it. I have cash reserves. I have lines of credit. I have that to dip into to also help mitigate risk. Okay. So you got to be careful with how much debt you have, but you also have to be careful with how much debt you actually utilize. And you never want to utilize all the credit you have because I've done that. I've made that mistake in the past. And sometimes I'll put too much on, on one line of credit and all of a sudden that's going to flag the credit bureau and that's going to show that you're over utilizing your debt or you're at the max. And what happened is my credit started to go down like this. And then as soon as I started to pay that down, it started to come back up again. But just be very mindful with how much debt you're putting on every individual line or every individual credit card. For instance, if I'm borrowing $100,000 in a HELOC, okay, you don't necessarily want to max one out. You might want to do 50 and 50 or, you know, divide that into three and put that into three different cards so you're not hitting that max and stressing your credit limit, okay, or your, your uh, utilization limit. So until next time, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, you know what? Hit the like button, leave a comment, reach out to me. My email address is eproperties at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing your questions and your, uh, your comments. And also, uh, I'm on Instagram, eproperties. Engage, ask questions on there too. Reach out to us and we'd love to uh, get the dialogue going. Okay, take care.